Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to go over the WebSocket functionality that was recently added to Neos. We're going to set this up to talk to and receive messages from what's called an echo server. So an echo server basically will repeat back to you anything you send to it. So if I say hello, it goes to the server and then the server says hello and it comes back. And that's what we're going to do because that shows both sending and receiving and from there you should be able to implement anything that you would like. If you'd like more information on how to build a WebSocket server or you know how ones works, etc., do let me know. That would have to be a non Neos tutorial, which I don't usually do, but I'm happy to do it if you ask for it. Let's get started with talking to this echo server. So I'm going to hover into Smooth POV. I'm in an empty world here, and I'm going to equip my developer tooltip and uh, create a few things. So much like the Twitch interface, um, functionality, uh, it requires, uh, the WebSocket stuff requires a component to be in the world or on an object to talk to WebSockets. So that's what we're going to create first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to create new 3D model box. I'm going to use a box simply because I can move it around. You could use any other object though, including like an avatar, or a facet, or anything like that. Let me just hop in and out of third person to fix that first person bug. So now that we're on the box, I'm going to go to the bottom of the box here and I'm going to go to attach component. Once you're in the attach component menu, go to network. And then you'll see WebSocket client here, so just add that. Now don't worry too much about uh, any of the properties on the WebSocket client component because we're going to be using that uh, entirely with logics for the most part. So equip your logic step now and point at the WebSocket client here with your laser, hit grab, and some empty space, just uh, hit secondary, and you'll see a WebSocket client interface open. I'm going to close the inspector now, we're actually done with that for today. So we'll put that next to the box here, and now we need to add some nodes to control the WebSocket client. So what we're going to do here is uh, open up the node browser, so node browser, and then head on over to the network um, folder, and inside the network folder, go for WebSocket, and then we're going to need uh, three of these. So we're going to need WebSocket Connect, we're going to need a WebSocket Text Message Receiver, and WebSocket Text Message Sender. Those are uh, all the nodes we'll need for a moment. We're going to hook those up. You'll see that each of these nodes has a sort of purpley pink um, input, and this is always the WebSocket client. So let's hook that up first. To do that, go to the top of the WebSocket client interface and put in the tip of your tool and just drag it into the first one. I recommend WebSocket Connect. You'll see here that it creates this arrow. This is called a reference, and we can actually reuse that reference to go uh, between them all. What I've tended to do with references these days though, especially things like this where you might change the WebSocket client, is if you create a relay, then it makes it easier to um, do that. To do that, just grab anywhere on the ribbon and it will make another relay, etc. So we'll use the relay that's just been created and we can plug it into WebSocket text message receiver and WebSocket text message sender. So with that set up, we can now actually start talking to the WebSocket, but that requires a few more inputs. So let's go over them. Um, WebSocket Connect deals with connecting to the WebSocket, and it's the one that you always have to start with. If you want to get messages or talk to a WebSocket, you need to you need to connect to it first. So WebSocket Connect will connect to the WebSocket when we get an impulse on the Connect Impulse input. So let's pull out a pulse line for that. To do that, we'll put the tip of the tool in, primary, and then secondary, and then we get an impulse line for connecting. It then needs a URI. You might think that you could just pull out a uh, input for URI. You actually can't. So here I'm putting in the tip, pulling it out with uh, primary and then pushing secondary and you'll see I'm not getting an input. That's fine. You can just use an input string for this. Um, so go all the way back to the root of your logics node menu and look for the uh, input folder. Once in the input folder, select string. And it's actually best to uh, spawn out two of these. So you're going to need one down here, which will be for WebSocket Text Message Sender, and another one at the top here, which is for um, WebSocket Connect. With these two string inputs in, um, connect the bottom one to the bottom of the WebSocket Text Message Sender. We'll uh, deal with that in just a moment, and connect the top one to the WebSocket Connect. Here we're just putting in the tip of the tool, holding down primary, bringing uh, the tip of the tool to the uh, thing we want to connect it to and letting go. You'll see that that connected and it actually cast the uh, string from a string which is red to the URI type which is this kind of gray or black color. We're now going to put the WebSocket URL in, which is the WebSocket URL of this echo server I uh, mentioned. Um, the echo server is um, hosted by a URL called uh, websocket.org. Uh, I believe there's a company behind it, but I don't quite remember the name of the company. So head on over to websocket.org for more information about WebSockets and to try out the echo server in your browser, because WebSockets work in pretty much all browsers as well. 
Um, so the URL, which will also be in the video description that you need to put in here, is ws and then shift colon forward slash forward slash echo dot websocket dot org. Web. Websocket dot org. And then push enter. So just for a second here, echo dot websocket dot org, push enter, and then that's hooked up. The last input for the WebSocket Connect um, uh, node is a user, and this is the user or the computer which is handling the WebSocket connection. In most cases, you'll want this to be a user which is directly owning the gadget or the um, thing that you're building that does it. So if it's a world, it should probably be the host user, which could be a headless user if the headless user is hosting the world. Or if it's a gadget or a facet or something like that, you would probably want it to be the um, user that owns the facet, in which case it will be the active user um, flow or a set user from a variable is also fine. As this is just in the world, we're going to use host user. For that, in the logic snow menu, we're gonna go back to the root, and we're going to go into users, and we're going to select host user. And we're gonna chuck that into the last input. There we go. So now that we've got that set up, we can now uh, actually connect that WebSocket. To see that, what we can do is we can um, output a uh, impulse from the WebSocket connect uh, node, which is here, which says on connect start. So all we do here is we take um, the tip of our tool in, put it out in secondary, and this will tell us when we connect. We can also go to the interface card here and pull out a display node for the is connected boolean. Again, just put in your tip primary, secondary, and you'll see false, which says we're not connected yet. So I'm now going to hit pulse on the top here, and you'll see that this should change to true. There we go, true. And that now means that we're connected to the WebSocket. So now we can start sending things to it. To send things to it, we're using the WebSocket text message send node, which we set up earlier with the input node for the string here, just because we had a string to hand. Um, if you want to start actually sending stuff to it, you'll need to set an impulse on the send impulse here. So uh, we're just going to use a uh, input for this. So again, put the tip in primary and secondary, and then this will send the message. On the output of WebSocket text message sender are three impulse outputs. These are very useful because they tell you various types of things. They tell you when the send starts, which is uh, when it starts sending the message, when it's sent, which is when it's completely sent, and on send error, which is when there's an error in sending it. The last input here is the sent data in form of a string. Usually, especially in this basic example, it matches the uh, string that we've got here, but it may be useful to take a look at that uh, variable at some point. So now we can actually send a message to this WebSocket. So if I go ahead and open up the keyboard here, I can send potato and hit pulse, and you'll see that we got one impulse on the on, uh, on send start and one on the on send, on, on send, yes. So on send start pulsed and on send pulsed. And that means our message was set, uh, sent successfully. Now we all need to do is uh, receive the message. For that, we're going to use the WebSocket text message receiver, which we spawned in earlier. I'm just going to move it down here so we've got a little bit more room. If the wires are crossing annoy you, feel free to hook it up with relays or whatever to make it look easier or cleaner, but we're just going to leave it like this. Now, all we're going to do with the received message is we're going to write it to a string. So for that, we're going to go back to the logics node root. We're going to go to the variables folder. We're going to go to the string and we'll spawn in a string variable. And then we're going to go to actions and we're going to go to write. Write takes two inputs, so we'll put in the uh, impulse on the top and the data on the bottom. And then on the output of side of the write node, there's this pink output. Plug that into the string here. And then from the string variable, pull out a ribbon, push secondary, and that will show you the contents of the variable. So now we should be able to send potato and get it into that variable there. There you go. So now you can see that we're sending messages through the WebSocket here and getting it back. So I'm sending the word potato to echo.websocket.org, and echo.websocket.org is just returning back exactly the same thing we sent it in the form of this uh, potato string. We can improve this a little bit by using um, a couple of more operators, so let's do that. Feel free to skip this bit if you're uh, familiar with what's going on now, but feel free to keep watching. I'll show you this. We're going to use plus and... Um, a few other nodes to make a kind of sort of chat log, etc., where this variable basically have each message that gets received followed by a new line. So to do that, we're gonna oh, well, that'll be fine. We're gonna pull out the uh, right so it's a little bit further away so that we can play with it, and we're going to put a plus in the middle of it from operators. 
And so what we're going to do here is take the um, output of the string variable and put that into the top of plus. And then we're going to need in the uh, second input of the plus node, we're going to need a node from the string folder. That is the new line node. This basically represents a new line in terms of a string. And then we're going to hit the plus here, and we're going to uh, put the WebSocket text message receiver's message in as the file input, and then the output of the plus goes into the right. So what this will do is it will take the current value of the string, add a new line, and then the new message which is received, and write that back to the variable. So now if I send potato again to the WebSocket, you'll see we now got potato, new line, potato. If I change this to something else, such as, uh, I don't know, four lights, and then hit pulse again, you'll see that we get four lights back through the WebSocket. That's all there is to it. I know that this looks quite simple, but that's because the WebSocket server on the other end isn't really doing anything. You could get all sorts of things going on here. For example, a chat message uh, interface where multiple people can be talking to the WebSocket at once and getting the messages back. You could do data um, transit. I know that some uh, of the Japanese community have done uh, things like MIDI or other stuff like that through this WebSocket connection. Um, you could probably hook up a connection to um, various like live streaming platforms such as uh, Twitch, although you should use the Twitch interface uh, for that. I'll put a link to the video description of the Twitch series for information on that, but you could probably do all sorts of other things depending on the WebSocket server that you've got set up. You cannot currently do binary messages or JSON using the WebSocket um, stuff. You could technically do JSON, but passing and um, reading the JSON would be up to you, and you'd have to implement that into logics, as will constructing the JSON be. And so I don't recommend that. Uh, you cannot do binary information, um, and you cannot do anything more sort of complicated than that. Like you have no control over the sort of types or the settings or the um, encoding of the WebSocket, etc. Um, and you also can't see sort of uh, other things like you know, error codes and stuff like that. If you're interested in connections and disconnections, you can actually use uh, another node for that, which is a network WebSocket, and it is WebSocket connection events. This will just tell you when uh, the WebSocket disconnects or connects. You can see connected, which will pulse when it's connected, and disconnected, which will pulse when it's disconnected. It doesn't give you any reasons or anything like that, um, but it will uh, at least let you know when those things happen. So try it out. If you'd like more information on the WebSocket functionality, do let me know. I'll be happy to make more information. If you'd like more information on how to write a WebSocket server, we can also do that. That will be a bit more advanced and not a Neos tutorial, but I'm happy to do it if you've got those questions. Leave them in the comments or contact me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.